Since the late 1980s, marine biologists have been shooting whales with crossbows to get samples of their skin and blubber, which sounds pretty medieval, but there wasn't a better way to get at the genetic material and fat the researchers needed to study things like their genealogy and how polluted their environment was. It can tell them a lot more too, and all this information can help in conservation efforts. DNA and a genealogical history, for example, allows researchers to see how populations are changing over time due to things like whaling or climate change, as well as more current events like which males are fathering calves. And traces of pollutants, like pesticides stored in the animal's blubber, tells them about potential threats to whale survival. But this stab and see method wasn't exactly what you'd call friendly or low stress for the whales or the researchers. Plus, biologists often want to study what happens to individuals or populations over time, which means shooting them more than once. And no one wants to turn these beautiful creatures into Swiss cheese. So in the last 15 years, researchers have turned to a different kind of sample, snot. And the way they're getting at it is not only much more whale friendly, but also pretty high tech. Now, collecting a sample is pretty standard practice in biology. A researcher will take a little piece of something, whether that's a chunk of coral or some tissue or blood from an animal. But getting that sample is rarely easy. If you've ever tried to chase after your dog with something it's not supposed to have in its mouth, you'll know what I mean. It gets even trickier when that animal lives in an environment we're not really made to go into, and the animal itself is 18 meters long and weighs more than 60 metric tons, like whales, which is where the giant biopsy dart on a crossbow method came from. But in 2011, a new idea hit researchers right in the face, literally. While hanging out on a boat following whales, a researcher named Ian Kerr was showered in buckets of water and smelly mucus that had been shot out as part of the whale's spout. And he thought, why not collect this stuff instead? It might sound kind of gross, but whale snot, also called whale spout, or sometimes whale blow, is full of clues that can tell researchers about the whale's health or life stage. These are things like cells from the surface of the lungs or mucus, proteins, fats, bits of DNA or nucleic acids. Kerr was also a fan of drones or uncrewed aerial vehicles and thought the tech could be used to collect this whale snot as well. The idea of a flying snot robot was born. Each drone is kitted out with six petri dishes that collect the goo. Researchers will sit on a boat hundreds of meters away from the whale, launch the drone 20 meters into the air, and hover over a whale and collect its exhaled breath when the time is right. And it's great because the aerial vehicles allow scientists to stay far away from the animal and not stress them out with their presence. Plus, the machines are fast and maneuverable, perfect for catching up with a speedy animal or one that only pops up occasionally, like a surfacing whale and several research groups have already put their own snot-collecting robots to good use. For example, in a 2018 study, Gemma Gijin and colleagues sequenced the virus genomes found in Eastern Australian humpback whale spout to learn more about how viruses take hold when the animals are stressed and how they're passed around. And in 2021, a marine mammal professor named Shannon Atkinson and her team used whale spout to assess the health of humpback and blue whales in Alaska, including measuring some of their hormones and screening for diseases. This could help with conservation and management of these populations in the future. And as a part of a 2024 study of whales in Canada, Aideen Omani and colleagues were able to reconstruct the genomes of humpback and fin whales using DNA found in whale snot, gaining insights about the genetic diversity of the population. Plus, other scientists have started using these same drones, and drones in general, to further expand what they know about these majestic creatures. For example, some drones can put trackers on whales that measure their movement and location. This helps the scientists learn even more about the whale's feeding behavior, movement and migration, or how their swimming changes due to things we humans do, like drive boats close by. One paper from 2023 even described how drones can just fly on by and plop a tracker with little suction cups attached to the whale's back, pretty much without it even knowing. And by combining drones with another hot topic bit of tech, deep learning algorithms, researchers can take super high resolution images of whales from above and calculate precisely how big they are to know how healthy individuals and pods are. But of course, conservation tech doesn't stop at drones. There's also special microphones or recorders that can be placed in whale habitats to record their calls and get a sense of who's around and what they're doing, be it looking for food or socializing. And sometimes planes are used to track the path whales take while migrating and maybe even see if there's any dangers along the route. All these studies build a picture of how well each whale is doing, what's stressing them out, whether it's ship noise or pollution, and how the population might change. And that information is vital in helping conservationists come up with strategies to protect these majestic animals without having to get out the crossbows. Thank you.